Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about derivatives of exponential functions. And uh, this is still a part of our video in differential calculus. So for this uh, topic, we're going to solve some deriv derivatives of the exponential functions. So we have two exponential functions. We have e as the base and we have a as the base, of which we know that a is any constant number other than e. Okay? other than the exponential or the Euler's number, E. Okay, so if we are going to, to take a look at the formulas here, for the derivative of exponential function as, as a base E raised to, let's say the derivative of E raised to X is still equal to E raised to X, given that the E raised to X, that, that the value of X is, the co coefficient of X is what? So, but if we have a exponential function that has a base of any constant a, okay, a such as this, a raised to x, okay, the formula will be a raised to x and then multiplied by the ln of a. So, in order for us to understand this, let us solve some problems. So, for example, we wish to get the derivative of pi raised to 1 all over x. So we know that the first formula is the formula that we are going to use here because the a here or the base here is our pi. And pi is um, a constant. It's, it's a number. Okay. So in order for us to get the derivative of this, that would be y prime. We have pi 1 raised to 1 all over x prime. Okay. So the very first thing that... But that uh, uh, we are going to do is, of course, we have to get the derivative of that pi raised to 1 all over x, of which we are going to use the first formula. So in this case, given that our a is pi, so we have what? Pi all over uh, raised to 1 all over x, and then we have multiplied by ln of a, which is our a is pi in this case. But take note, because that this uh, uh, pi is raised to 1 all over x, we have also the differentiate 1 all over x. Because uh, in this example, a raised to x, we have a raised to x ln of a. And actually, we have to differentiate still the exponent. Okay? So if we're going to get the derivative of x, okay, so that would be 1. So that our... Uh, our formula reduces to a raised to x ln of a. So this is only in the case if the derivative is purely in terms of x because the derivative is 1. The derivative of x is 1. So we have pi raised to 1 all over x and then we have ln of pi. So the derivative of this is quotient rule. We're going to use quotient rule here. That's low d high minus high d low. Low derivative of high minus high derivative of low and uh, all over low squared. That's the mnemonic. So we have what? Low is x, derivative of high, derivative of 1 is 0 because that's a constant. Minus copy the high, which is the numerator, which is 1. And the derivative of the low is 1. All over low squared is x squared. So this would be 0. And then we have pi raised to 1 all over x, ln of pi. Then we have negative 1 all over x squared. Okay? So our answer would be this one. So we have negative pi raised to 1 all over x. And then we have ln of pi all over x squared. So what we did here is numerator times numerator, then denominator times denominator. So this would be our answer for the first problem in finding the derivative of y raised to pi <coughs> raised to 1 all over x. So for number 2, let's try to solve some problems. We have y equals the square root of 2 raised to x. Now, whenever we see square roots, the very first thing that we're going to do is to convert that uh, radical into exponential. So we have 2 raised to x raised to 1 half. Okay? So if we wish to get the derivative of this, we have to get the derivative of t raised to x, 1 half prime. 
Okay? So that is that the 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 format, okay? So the very first thing that we're going to do here since our prime is outside of this uh, uh square root or raised to one half, we're going to use chain rule. Okay? So this is one half. So what are we going to do is we have one half, then we have two raised to two raised to x. 2 raised to x, 1 half minus 1. Okay? So, 1 half minus 1 and then multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, 2 raised to x. Okay? So, let us first simplify this before we actually simplify or get the derivative of that. So, we have 1 half, 2 raised to x, negative 1 half, multiplied by 2 raised to x prime. So, this is negative 1 half. I can reciprocate this. I can get the reciprocal of this and then negate the exponent. So, this becomes 1 all over 2 multiplied by 2 raised to x. Of course, we, we get the reciprocal, so we negate the exponent. The negative of negative becomes positive and that, that is why positive 1 half. Then, multiplied by the derivative of 2 raised to x. So, if I'm going to rewrite this, this should be raised to 1 half. This should be square root of 2 raised to x. And not we are not yet done because we only have differentiated the outer part. So it's now time to differentiate this. So this is still the formula. This is our a. Okay, This is still exponential. So what are we going to do is to get the derivative of that. And remember, that would be 2 raised to x. Okay, And then ln of a, which is 2. Okay? And then differentiate x, okay? So we are going to differentiate x. We are going to differentiate the the the, the numerate or the exponent, okay? That becomes one, simple one. So it's it's nothing, okay? Any number multiplied by one would be nothing. So in other words, our answer this is two raised to x. Our answer would be two raised to x ln of two all over. 2 multiplied by 2 raised to x. Square root of 2 raised to x. Now, we can still simplify. In the, in the numerator, we have 2 raised to x. Oops, let me just rewrite this. In the numerator, we have 2 raised to x. In the denominator, we have square root of 2 raised to x. So, if I'm going to rewrite this, that is 2 raised to x, ln of 2, all over 2. Then, this would be 2 raised to x, raised to 1 half. So, Technically, we can divide 2 raised to x and then 2 raised to x, then 1 half. Okay? So, basically, that is what we are going to do. Okay? 2 raised to x is 1. Okay? So, 1 minus 1 half becomes negative 1 half. Ah, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. So, this becomes what? The exponent of this is 1. Okay? So, loss of exponent. Same base, 2. Same exponent. Okay, x, but it is raised to a certain number. This is 1, this is 1 half, so 1 minus 1 half would be 1. So our uh, would be 1 half. So our answer would be 2 raised to x raised to 1 half. That is the simplification of this 1, okay, of this 2. Okay, that's the simplification, loss of exponent. And then we have ln of 2 all over 2. So our answer in terms of square root, we have square root, of 2 raised to x, then ln of 2 all over 2. So, this will be our answer for this given some exponential functions. Okay. So, yeah. So, for our number 3, we have number 3, find the derivative of 2 raised to square root of x. Okay. So, get the y prime. That would be 2 square root, raised to square root of x prime. So, what happens is that we are going to in differentiate this as a whole. Okay? So, this is another exponential with a as a equals 2. Okay? So, we have 2 square root of x. Okay? And then, we have just copy the, just copy the original function and multiply it by the ln of the a, which is 2. And then, multiply it by... Of course, the derivative of the square root of x. In this case, that is the exponent. So we need to get that. We need to get the derivative of square root of x. And that is x raised to 1 half prime. Okay? 
So, how do we do this? Power rule. Okay, how do we get the derivative of x raised to 1 half? Power rule. So, we have 1 half x raised to 1 half minus 1. Okay? 1 half minus 1. And the derivative of x would be 1. Okay? So, we have 2 square root of x, ln of 2. Then, we have 1 half x raised to negative 1 half. And then, multiplied by 1 is still 1. Okay? So, the answer here, we can... Get the reciprocal of x raised to negative 1 half so that it becomes 1 all over 2 times x raised to 1 half. Or in other words, if we're going to uh, do this, okay, so we have 2 square root of x ln of 2. Okay, this becomes 1 all over 2 square root of x. Okay, numerator times numerator, then denominator times denominator, this becomes 2 square root, 2 raised to square root of x. 2 raised to the square root of x, ln of 2, all over 2, square root of x. Okay, now we can also simplify the 2's here. Okay, this has an exponent of 1. So, we can rewrite it as 2 square root of x raised to the square root of, all over 2 raised to 1 would be 2 raised to the square root of x minus 1. Okay, by loss of exponents. So, we have 2 raised to the square root of x minus 1. Then we have ln of 2 all over the square root of x. That would be the final answer in getting the derivative of that exponential function. Okay? So, how about for number 4? Let's try number 4. Okay? So, for number 4, we have get the derivative of y equals e raised to negative x cube. Okay? So, to get the derivative of this, we have e raised to negative x cube prime. So, we're going to differentiate the whole process. Okay? So, the very first thing we're going to do is to copy the original function, just like what we are doing with the a. Okay? On the first formula. So, we have e raised to negative x cube, and then we are going to differentiate the exponent. Okay? Multiplied by the de derivative of the exponent. So, the derivative of negative x cubed is by power rule. No? So, that becomes uh, uh, we have 3 times negative x, 3 minus 1. Okay? And then the derivative of uh, this one would be uh, what? Okay? That would be e raised to negative x cubed minus 3x squared. Okay? So, and then multiply, that becomes negative 3x squared e raised to negative x cubed. So, uh, that would be the answer for our derivatives. Okay? So, it so happened that uh, the formula of the derivative of e raised to x is still e raised to x. Why is that? Because if you get the derivative of e raised to x, that would be e raised to x, then multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. Okay? the exponent of x, that becomes 1. So, in turn, it becomes e raised to x. But if if the given example, such as like this, that the exponent is not purely in terms of x, so it becomes like this. So, for number 5, let us try another problem. So, we have y equals uh, 4 raised to 3x squared. Okay? So, it's very easy. This will be your A. This is not E. So, to get Y prime, that becomes 4 raised to 3X squared prime. So, to get uh, the Y prime, that becomes, copy this. Okay, and then you have LN of the A. LN of 4. Then, don't forget to differentiate the exponent. Okay? So, that becomes 4 raised to 3X squared then we have ln of 4. And then the derivative of 3x squared, okay, would be 6x. So, your final answer would be 4 raised to 3x squared, 6x, and then we have ln of 4. So, that would be your final answer for this uh, problem. Okay, so it's basically uh, basic if you really know how to uh, solve, okay? 
the exponential functions. On the latter parts, this this will be only the part one. I'm going to um, continue uploading differential or derivatives of exponential functions part two. So down to our last second, second problem, second to the last. So we have 3 raised to 1 all over x. So again, this would be our a. And we have y prime as 3 raised to 1 all over x prime. Okay, so that would be 3 raised to 1 all over x, then ln of 3, and then the derivative of 1 all over x. And we know that the derivative of 1 all over x is negative 1 all over x squared. We have solved it a while ago. So we have 3 raised to 1 all over x, then we have ln of 3, then multiplied by negative 1 all over x squared. Okay, so that's the derivative. So you can now just simplify, multiply by numerator times numerator. That becomes negative 3 raised to 1 all over x. Then we have ln of 3 all over the x squared. So this becomes our answer for this problem. And yeah, down to our last problem for today's session. Okay, so we have 7. We have y equals e raised to sine of x. Okay, and the derivative of this would be e raised to sine of x prime. Of course, copy the whole function. We have e raised to sine of x. And then multiply it by the derivative of the exponent. And then the derivative of exponent is simply sine of x is simply cosine of x. So the, the answer would be cosine of x e raised to sine of x. So that would be our final answer for this video. So thank you so much for listening. If you uh, like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. And please don't forget to share my videos for those engineering students or those who are struggling with their differential calculus course particularly the derivatives getting the derivative of a certain function so thank you so much for listening again this is Ingeri Abbott see you again on the next video